Okay, so in this last section, we're just going to take a couple of minutes and describe quantitative data since we already have talked about how we can describe um, qualitative data. All right, so today we're going to look at measuring the mean and median, how we can measure the spread of the data with the standard deviation and the IQR, how we can identify outliers and construct a box and whisker plot using the five number summary, and finally we'll be able to calculate numerical summaries with technology. Just remember all those directions are also on Blackboard anytime you need them. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is the measure of center called the mean. So the mean is the most often measure of center. It's what you will be using most of the time um, in AP statistics. Basically, to find the mean is just what you've done in the past. You're literally just adding up all of the values and then um, dividing by how many you have. So what I just want you to keep in mind that notice here we have this X bar. What that X bar is, it's just a different type of notation that's telling us that we have a sample and the sample is all the sum of your observations dividing by how many you have. So in mathematics the Greek capital letter sigma is short for add them all up. So this is just a shorthand way of um, saying add them all up. So the mean is equal to the sum of all of your individual values divided by how many you have. What I want you to kind of think of is when we're discussing mean is think of it as a balance point of your distribution. So the mean can be infect, affected by unusually large or unusually small numbers. It's going to influence your mean because it's going to either pull the mean towards the higher values or towards the lower values. So think about your mean as like a balance. It's in as a scale. It's going to balance your values. Where would you have to put the mean so that your scale is balanced? Okay, so there's two different means. So let's say we wanted to examine the AP exam scores for AP statistics in Fairfax County. There's two means we're going to discuss. The first mean is X bar. This is a mean taken from a sample. All right, so anytime you have a mean taken from a sample, you use X bar. Notation is really important really important. This specifically tells us that it was not the entire population. All right, an example of this would be you get 20 students from various schools in FCPS, find the mean score for the 20 students. Now, the other kind of mean that we can talk about is a mean taken from the population, and that's going to be denoted as the Greek letter mu. So that would be you getting all the scores of every AP statistics students in Fairfax County. This is your population mean. Now we can define our population. It doesn't have to be the population of the whole world. We define what our, we want our population to be. In this case, it's all of the AP statistics students in Fairfax County. Another measure of center is called the median, which I'm sure you've heard about in other math classes that you've discussed. The median is different from the mean in the sense that the mid median is the midpoint of a distribution. So it just literally breaks the data in half. It's not averaging the data. It's just telling us where is the middle of the distribution. It's a position within the distribution. So to find the median of the distribution, just remember, arrange all your observations from smallest to largest. Um, if the number of observations is odd, the median is the center of the observations in the ordered list. So you just cross out the bottom, cross out the top until you get to the center. If the observations are even, the median is the average of the two center observations. Okay, so you pick the two middle numbers, add them together, and divide by two. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the data below to calculate the mean and median of commuting time in minutes of 20 randomly selected New York workers. So I want you to think about your notation. All right, what's it going to be? Is this a population or a sample? Go ahead, try this, hit pause, and then when you want to take a look at the answer, um, go ahead and hit play. Okay, so there's your mean. Um, this is just a right here, okay? This is the, your ordered data. This is allowing us to calculate the median since everything is in order. Notice with the stem and leaf plot, just as a reminder, we have a key, okay? Um, and that allows us to find the median. So since there was even number, 20 randomly selected, we're going to have 9 above and 9 below. And then you have the 2 in the middle, 20 and 25. To get um, the median, you're going to add them together and divide by 2. All right, so we 
in the future we're going to be discussing when can we use the mean and when can we use the median to measure the center. Both are useful in different ways, but there's different situations in which you'll use each. What I want you to keep in mind that the mean is an average value. It takes into account low values, high values, and the median is a typical value. So what value would you see often because the mean is going or sorry the median is going to be in the middle of all of your data points please just be careful with the um, don't confuse the meaning of the mean and the median because they are different okay the mean if we're taking a look at distributions and we're checking to see if they're symmetric skewed right skewed left the mean and median of a symmetric distribution are going to be about the same so they're going to be pretty close together if the distribution is exactly symmetric, which doesn't often happen in real life, the mean and median are exactly the same. Now, think about the mean and how it's calculated. In a skewed distribution, the mean is usually pulled out to the farther tail. So if a distribution is skewed to the right and it has a long right tail, the median the mean is going to be pulled towards that right tail. If a distribution is skewed to the left and it has a long left tail, the mean is going to be pulled to the tail where the median is going to be bunched up where most of your typical values are going to be. Okay, so they won't be in the same position if distributions are skewed. All right, so the question is, if we look at a distribution, how do we know which one gives us a better measure of center of our data? All right, so in the last case, when we took a look at the commuting time, we said that the mean commuting time was 31.25 minutes, and we said the median commuting time was 22.5 minutes. That's a pretty big difference, minutes, so which one is actually better? So let's just take a look at this graph right here. Okay, this graph right here is going to be, if you sort of flip it over, it's going to be skewed to the right. We have a long right tail with these values. So that means the mean is going to be pulled towards these values. Well, which better typically represents the amount of commuting time in New York City? Most of these data points down here are more of a typical um, commuting time in New York City. So a median in this case is going to be a better measure of center. All right, the median is resistant to outliers. So if I change this from 85 to 1000, it's not going to change the position of the median. That's what it means to be resistant to outliers. However, the mean would change because if I had a thousand minutes commuting time, and I average that in, that's going to pull that mean really high, and it's not going to be a good representation of the data. Okay, so how do we know which one to use? All right, it's going to be based on the shape of the graph. If your graph is roughly symmetric, the mean and median are about going to be in the middle, and they're going to be very similar, approximately the same. So in this case, it doesn't matter. I would just highly suggest most of the time people, um, and you'll see using the mean. Okay, so if it's approximately symmetric, you're going to use the mean. If it is skewed to the right, where you have a little bit more of a longer right tail, the median is going to be where most of the data lies, where that bunch is, and the mean is going to be pulled down by that tail. So in this case, the median is going to be a better measure of center. It's going to be a better measure where most of the values are because the mean is going to be pulled a little bit too high. Therefore, the mean is going to be higher than the median. Okay. In this case down here, we have a left skewed distribution and the median, once again, is going to be where most of the data lies. The mean is going to be pulled down to the left, which means it's not going to be a good representation because it's going to look like the average time or whatever is lower than it actually is. Okay, so if a distribution is symmetric, the mean or the median can be used, but most of the time it's going to be the mean. However, if it's skewed right or left, um, you're going to use the median to describe the measure of center because it's not going to, it's going to be resistant to extreme outliers that are too high or too low. All right, so before you make a decision on what measure of center and spread you're going to use, just make you, sure you think about your measure of center and what it represents. So this is a just a good idea of showing like why the average is not always the best, okay? Because this plant right here is going to average it out and make it much larger. <laughs> Okay. All right, so two measures of spread we're going to talk about are the IQR and the standard deviation. So if we just look like a 
look at a measure of center alone, that can be misleading because it just tells us where the center of the data is. It doesn't necessarily tell us how spread out the data is. Is there a lot of data close to the center? Is there a lot of data farther away from the center? We're going to use the spread to help describe that information. A useful numerical description of a distribution requires both a measure of center and a measure of spread. So you're going to see both of those together all the time. So the first one we're going to talk about is the IQR and how do we calculate that. So to calculate the quartiles, it's specifically talking about the middle 50% of the data. You're going to arrange all of the observations in increasing order, locate the median. The first quartile is the median of the observations to the left of the median. So you have your median, you split your data in half, your first quartile is the middle of your lower half, and your third quartile is the middle of the upper half. Okay, so you have your data split in middle, quartile one's at the bottom, middle of the bottom, Quartile 3 is the middle of the top, and your median is straight up in the middle. Okay. In order to find your inner quartile range, you're going to take quartile 3 minus quartile 1, and that's going to tell us how far apart the middle 50% of your data is. Because if you think about it, we've split our data into four pieces. Up, we have first lowest up to the first quartile, first quartile quartile up to the median, median up to the third quartile, third quartile up to the end, so we have four pieces. This inner quartile range gives us 50% of the pieces, quartile three to the median, median to quartile one. Okay, so it's going to tell us, like, is the middle 50% of the data close to the median or pretty far away? Okay, so how would we find an IQR and interpret it? So go ahead and take a minute and try this, hit pause, and then um, come back to see the answer. Okay, so this is what I was saying that um, you have the 50% of your data, so you have about 25% here, 25% here, 25% here, and 25% here. So the inner quartile range go, talks about 50% of the data, so 27.5. Okay, so what does that mean? So specifically when you have to interpret the IQR, make sure you specifically use the sentence. The range of the middle 50% of the data, we're specifically looking at the range or the difference between um, the middle 50% of travel times for New Yorkers in the sample is 27.5 minutes. And notice that that's in context also. Okay, now is the range resistant to outliers? All right, so let's just take a look at this. Here was our, our quartiles, okay, our IQR was 27.5. Now, is the range resistant to outliers? Absolutely not. So here's my lowest, here's my highest. If I had a data point all the way over here, like a thousand that we were talking about, the range from five to a thousand is huge. So the range is not resistant to outliers. It changes if you get a very large number. However, the IQR is resistant to outliers because if I put a number that's a thousand over here, that's not going to change that IQR value. It's going to keep it exactly the same. So don't ever use the range to describe your spread. You're always going to use your IQR. Now, the next question is, how do we identify outliers? So outliers are points that are really far away from the rest of the data. To find the outliers, what you're going to do is first you find your IQR, multiply that by 1.5. So this is basically just telling us, okay, how far away from the rest of the data points do we have to be in order to be considered an outlier? If it falls more than 1.5, times the IQR above the third quartile or below the first quartile, then you know you have an outlier. Please make sure on the AP exam, if you're asked to find outliers, you must show your work. So let's think about this for a second. Okay, we know our IQR from our New York travel time was 27.5 minutes, and we're taking the 1.5 times that IQR and seeing how far away is that from quartile one, how far away is that from quartile three, all right? So 1.5 times your IQR gives you 41.25 minutes. To find the lower bound, you take quartile one minus that 41.25 minutes. So anything below that is an outlier, okay? What's a long commuting time? So you're gonna take quartile three plus 1.5 times your IQR. 
All right, so the, we got that right here. Here's my quartile 3 plus that. Any time above 83.75 is going to be an outlier. So this is taking a really long time, okay, and this is basically taking no time at all, which is pretty much impossible.